This is your dose of daily market wisdom with master trader Nick Santiago. Starting from humble beginnings, Nick has been beating the markets for over two decades. He shares with you his take on the profitable trades that will have you moving towards financial freedom in no time at all. To see an in-depth review of his track record and much more, go to inthemoneystocks.com. Welcome, and you are listening to The Daily Market Wisdom with Master Trader Nick Santiago. Today is April 10th, 2020. Markets are closed. However, uh, Nick and I were talking. We figured, you know what? It's a good time, a good day to look back, to kind of get perspective, to see where the market's been, to see where it's going, and to help you figure out a strategy for for moving ahead and that's uh, that's what this is all about nick's record his uh, history it really speaks for itself you should just go over to inthemoneystocks.com check it out go for the trial membership you'll be really happy you did so nick we had this monstrous correction i mean it, to me it's starting to look like a correction a one and a half month bear move under the dow theory this would be considered to be a intermediate pullback yeah of the market's preceding advance, all right, and we could say that started in November of 2016 when uh, Trump was elected, it could go pull back either a third to all of the preceding gains from that rally. And that was really a almost unabated rally. What's your take on it? Well, this was a year anyway that, that was supposed to be a corrective year. So the, you know, the zero year, and I know we've spoken about this before, is not a bullish year. It's never been. It's, it's just legendary trader W.D. Gann said, if you could count on one hand or two hands, all your fingers, you can figure out what the market's going to do year to year. And there are exceptions to every rule. Um, there are times where the zero year will be up. But this was going to be a corrective year. This was also what we call a panic year. And I can't get in. That would take me days to tell you how to discover that. But we knew there was going to be some kind of a panic. I just didn't think it would be this big. And I never in a million years thought there was going to be a virus involvement. So, <laughs> you know, I just want to put that out there. I, I, I don't ever know what the catalyst is going to be. But I, didn't, I, I did not think we'd have a decline this quickly. Um, but what we did do was very, very constructive. If, if you just look at the charts, traders can easily see everything that happened as it unfolded. And if you just take a look at the S&P 500, or you could use the S&P Spiders, which is the ETF for the S&P 500. And what happened was the Spiders actually, when they sold off in the month of February and March, they actually came down to a moving average. And that moving average was at 218 on a monthly chart. And we hit it perfectly to the penny, and then the market started to bounce back up. Now, the charts are telling us that's a support level. And then you get news that there's going to be stimulus. Then you get news that the Federal Reserve is printing more money, creating more liquidity in the system. Then you get news that there's a bailout program for the country. Then you get more bailout programs. So, you know, when I look at the chart, that's what I pay attention to, and that's what I follow. Um, I think for the bulk of this right now, we probably have a short-term low in place. Can we go down and do time? Can, you know, we get uh, maybe earnings reports next week or the next month or so, and they're so terrible that, you know, the market sentiment shifts again. But <clears throat> what I will say is um, when you do dip again, you start to look to be a buyer again because we've hit critical, critical levels. At worst case, we'll go retest them. If we do break them, it will be very, very minor breaks, but it will get everybody on board to be very scared. And that's what creates big rallies. You can make a case that since we had the 2009 bottom from the Great uh, Recession of 2008, uh, every rally that we've seen has been on the back of a short squeeze. So just think about it. If you get enough people to start betting against it and then they get squeezed out, what do they have to do? They have to buy back in because when you short a stock, you actually go ahead and borrow the stock and then you return it hopefully at a lower price, and that's where you make your profit. But if you have to return it at a higher price, you're looking to protect your downside because you don't want to lose money yourself. So, again, um, this is just the market dynamics. This is how things work. So 
you know, like I've been saying, I have not been bearish this market since the equinox, and that's also a natural turning point not only for the earth, but very, very often it's a natural turning point for the stock market. So um, that was pretty much a bullseye, and that's what my service is called at In the Money Stocks, bullseye. And we, we pretty much traded that pretty good and um, pretty well. So we're, we're, I'm actually thinking the markets this week coming up, we have options expiration next Friday. So you're going to get some what we call a neutral trading week. There will be a lot of game playing. The institutions will just take stocks all over the map, and they'll try to pin them to a, to a, a price where um, the retail option is placing his bet, so where the retail trader option, uh, options trader is placing his bet. So the market always tries to get out the retail options trader, and that is coming up next week. So get ready for a week filled of games. Um, but overall, um, we had a really, really constructive uh, market period since the, um, since the 23rd of, of, of March. I mean, it's been really a very good move up for the markets. And, and I think that can still continue a bit further. However, you know, this week, you've got to really be on your toes. Hey, and I would I would add that uh, the market gained more this week and, and last than it has at any time percentage wise since 1974, and we're talking you know 46 years, and that should tell you a lot. So let's take a look at a few particular sectors. You mentioned hotels, particularly Hilton, Hyatt, and Marriott, and how is that uh, trade shaping up right now? Yeah, it's doing exactly what I thought. What I what I had said on your program was that we we put in a higher low, and now we just wait on pattern. Basically, what I like to call it now is I just stalk the stock. I just sit there and I wait for the pattern to shape out. I don't want to see it go higher. I don't want to see it go lower. I love to just see it go sideways. And if it does that, then it's telling me this thing's going to probably go up to you know ninety ninety five dollars. Right now, Hilton today is trading at $68.45. So, um, you know, just think about that. That's a tremendous percentage gain um, that's in the making. Hey, and, uh, and we should mention today is Good Friday, and happy Good Friday, and happy Easter to everyone out there, all of you out there. So the markets are closed. Let's take a look at precious metals. What are you seeing there? We had a well, big day yesterday. You- I mean, it was a monster day yesterday, right? You had um, spot gold back to 1740. Um, the GDX, which is the gold miners, finished at you know just under $29, which if you remember on your show when I got into mm-hmm. that play, I said that's where it would be going. Yes. Um, and then you had the GLD, up, which is gold miners ETF, up $4 yesterday. I mean, gold has been soaring and roaring. It's a little bit stretched here. It's a little bit extended. Um, after a pullback, though, I like it again on the long side, but you've got to let these things pull back in because that's been a straight-up move that we've had now, and any time you get those kind of big um, surges like that, you want to let the market pull back a little bit, let it give you another pattern. Um, gotcha. This is not a pattern I go up and chase at this stage of the game, but I, I still, you know, the trend overall is up. The trend is up on every single time frame. Um, from small to large, and you buy pullbacks on that, provided you get the right setup. You know, when, when I got into that GDX position, um, you know, it, it was around $24, and uh, I, I remember getting a couple of emails and people saying, oh, you know, it's going to go down again because the market's going to fall and margin calls, and, you know, again, that's why I don't listen to anything but the charts. And here we are, it went to 23, and now it's at 29. I mean, you know, I took 18.5% gain yesterday on that trade alone on the second half position. Uh, that's amazing. And that's typical. Silver, silver also had a major day yesterday, a couple percent gain. It's uh, back into the 15s. It's making up a lot of lost territory. It was up close to 19 when the uh, crash hit. And I guess the margin calls, the liquidity, right now it's at 15.40 uh, on the bid. Uh, that's the spot market. Uh, same deal there? Yeah. Silver is going to go probably to 17. Um, that'll take it to its daily chart, 200-day moving average. And then you'll see it pause. So um, I, I, if you're a trader, you, you know, you wait after that pullback. That's when you start to eye the pattern. It, it's going to need some consolidation there. But, um, again, the trend is up on all time frames, and it's going to go ultimately go a lot higher. 
Yeah, ultimately, and we're talking over a period of months and years, obviously, it's not just going to happen all at once, but those mining companies that, uh, that really have been the Maytag repairmen of the, the prior bull market, you know, nobody cared about them. They were net nets. I mean, you know, they had more cash in the bank than their stock was trading for oftentimes. I mean, it's just been a disfavored sector of the market for nine years. All that's changing now. I mean, go go look at a chart. Uh, maybe the listeners can go look at a chart of Newmont Mining. The ticker symbol is NEM. I mean, that stock yesterday was up six dollars and seventy-eight cents to fifty-seven thirty-one. That's a thirteen percent move yesterday in the name. And um, you know, these these stocks have all broken out to the upside. Now they're overbought, they're extended. I would not mm -hmm. be a buyer here, but I think you can get back into them on a pullback. So if you're looking to get into uh, mining names right now, I wouldn't do it. I would wait, let it settle in, let the patterns re, re, readjust themselves. Um, once you get a basing pattern, that is going to be another opportunity because the trend is up again on all of these uh, mining stocks right now. Hey, and if we go back to the Great Depression and, you know, we had gold they like to call it confiscation. It was really expropriation because they did buy it from you. They didn't just take it and walk away with it. They gave you yeah, dollars. The, the uh, price, the yeah. price was up uh, after after the program yes. was completed. <laughs> the price um, sort of. <laughs> yeah, it, it amounted to confiscation because they took your gold and then they devalued the dollar because the dollar was tied to gold and it went up to forty two dollars the ounce. But in the meantime, you know, you had uh, surrendered all your gold, so you gave up a 20% gain. But the, the go-to mining stock at the time was Homestake. And Newmont is the Homestake of today. And Homestake went up 700% during the Great Depression. Well, the market was floundering, and that's what the mining stocks did. And we could see something way, way beyond that now. I'm not... Uh, I'm not as good at forecasting as you are, but uh, but certainly something's afoot with these mining stocks that uh, that maybe most of the uh, public is missing out on. Well, what people don't realize is that when when central banks have to print as much money as they have, and, and I'm not anti the central banks by any means, especially the Federal Reserve. I think that they've really made an effort. Um, to, to try to keep things going. Um, there's a lot of mistakes that were made in the past, and that's you know, obviously going to come home to roost at some point. Um, but when, when, when you print that kind of money, um, gold is just telling us inflation is on the cusp. <laughs> yeah. And I know the Fed has been looking for inflation. They've been talking <laughs> about a 2%, you know, the, a GDP, yeah. and they're looking sure. to get inflation going again to fight deflation. Mm -hmm. um, they're going to get it. They're going to get it in spades, too. So, you know, yeah. it, this, is, this is what it's telling us. That's that old uh, saying, make sure you know what you want because you just might get it, as Confucius would Careful say. Careful what you wish for. Yeah. <laughs> Careful what you wish for, Fed. And, yeah, so we see that. So what you're seeing here, we're going to have a recovery. The, the charts are kind of telling us that travel, restaurants, uh, the restaurant stocks, they've already made a move. Do you think they're going higher? I think they all. I think a lot of things need to pull back now um, mm -hmm. at this at this juncture because we've had such a big move. Um, so I, I'm in the camp that I hope we get a pullback this week. I really don't know what we're going to get. I never know what we'll get during an options expiration week. This is going to be options X for April on Friday, but the whole week is really a week of institutional game playing where they're going to try oh. to pin stocks to certain levels depending on what options are out there, and they're going to try to get. Uh, the majority of the small retail options traders uh, to expire their their trades to expire worthless. That's the name of the game. Yeah. That happens each and every month. So we're we're in that uh, predicament now. But ultimately, yeah, I, I ultimately think we're going to have a monster recovery. I don't think it's just ending here. But this <sighs> year, the, the zero year of the decade, is going to be a choppy year. There will be there will be times where I'm going to get short again at some point. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I have been long now since uh, the equinox and even actually a little bit before, but there will be times where we will look to sell um, some things out here and, and, and play that short side for trade. 
But ultimately, yes, I, I do believe the market will um, go a lot higher, and uh, you know, at least that's what the charts and the bigger uh, time frames are telling me. Okay, so staffing companies, companies like Manpower and uh, Kelly Services, there's a whole bunch of them. What yeah. are they? What are their charts screaming out to you so, now? So those charts have had pretty good bounces as well. We'll, we'll just talk <laughs> about Manpower since that's probably one of the more popular names. I know there, you know, are many others. Um, but when you when you look at Manpower, it went down to fifty dollars. That low in, in that stock was was done on the twenty third of March. Again, another Equinox bottom. Then you made a little higher low on the on April first, and now it's back above its twenty day moving average sitting at 61.80. So it's had a really good advance. I think manpower could go higher. However, you're going to need to see some consolidation because it is currently into a lot of resistance um, right around the $63 level. So um, you could see it went as high uh, yesterday as 63.21. It closed back down um, at 61.80, and that's where it is today. So if it goes sideways, then it's telling you that this stock wants to work its way up into 70 bucks and possibly go as high as 75. So um, there's definitely some more upside there. Um, that's a positive. Um, but after that, then the stock really needs to do a lot of work to get back into that $80, $85 area. That's going to be a tough task, a tall order in my opinion. But in due time, you know, that can happen. But in, in the short run, you know, it, you'll go to 70 maybe 75 and then that will be the end of the run. Right. that name. Okay. And so housing stocks, uh, they've taken it on the chin for sure. And, you know, nobody's buying houses. There's no housing market. I hear uh, ads on the radio saying, oh, it's great. There's less competition on the buy side. There's less competition on the sell side. But you can't really sell a house right now because you can't go and look at it unless you're an investor. You don't want to buy a house sight unseen. Well, I'll say this much. Um, Lennar, which is a company, Lennar Corp., which is a home builder that I follow very closely, um, it's had a great move. Again, that stock bottomed out, believe it or not, uh, on the 18th of March, which, which a lot of stocks did right around that time period. You made a higher low on April 3rd, and that low, the higher low, well, let's just talk about the bottom. The bottom uh, in Lennar was 25.42, and that occurred on March 18th. Then on the uh, 2nd of April, they made a higher low at 32.41. And here the stock closed, you know, uh, yesterday at 44.80. So it's had a great move. What I would say is I love stocks that make higher lows. Watch for the pattern now. And if it goes sideways or it gives you some kind of a minor retrace, it's, it's a buy. And this stock can go easily back up to 55, 60 bucks. Interesting. So... So this could be indicative of what the housing sector is going to do then, huh? Yeah. So, I mean, when I look at the housing sector, um, I look at um, another chart. You could always look at the home builders, um, but I like to look at the Philadelphia uh, housing sector index. That's um, the HGX is what we call it. And that has the same exact pattern as Lenar has. So um, that's what I like to look at. It's had a great reversal. And, and the irony here is if you know technicals, which, you know, I teach um, everybody what I do. So there's nothing secret. You know, all, all of my members and subscribers, if they've taken any of my classes or courses, they know exactly how I, how I pick these stocks out and how I give out my, what I say in my reports. I show them exactly what I do. And if, if they take these classes, they get, they get educated on it. But mm -hmm. the Philadelphia Semiconductor Index on the monthly chart pierced through it's 200 month moving average, and, and that was at $200.55. And now here we are sitting at 257. So, you know, it's done the same thing. It's gone down to a level where um, there was massive support, <clears throat> and it followed the rules. It bounced back up. So it's had a great run. I think housing stocks can still go a little bit higher um, over the next few weeks, but then, then they're going to come back in again. Not saying they'll make new lows. But, you know, they'll retrace, they'll pull back like everything else. So nothing goes up in a straight line. There's always more opportunities that will develop. And, you know, that's the, that's the idea of a trader. We, we, don't, we don't get fixated in, you know, we're going to hold this 
stocks in the next 10 years. We're not doing what Warren Buffett does. Mm -hmm. Um, God bless Warren Buffett. Nothing against him. It's worked for him. But if, you know, not many people can get involved in a stock and be involved. Like Goldman Sachs, he got involved in that in 2008 when the stock was $125 a share. He was able to weather the storm down to $60, $65, which was the low in the stock. We don't do that. We're not looking to stay in that in the stock that long. Um, we're looking to make our, our, our move out of it and um, gain, get our gain, and then we just go hunting for the next one. Right. So you go look for the next opportunity. And I guess the question is, like we got we, in the past three weeks, 16 million unemployment insurance claims, right? And how many of those people, Nick, are going to get hired back, in your opinion, if you were charting unemployment, what would you say? Well, I haven't looked at it, but I would say, you know, probably over half, mm -hmm. I think, will get hired back. Um, maybe more, maybe a little bit more. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's an interesting conundrum, right? Um, it is, it is. Yeah, so, so you have to wonder what, uh, where, the, where the future is, and uh, so much liquidity is raced into the market perhaps uh, to the detriment of the uh, dollar and, uh, and currencies, right? But, but nonetheless, uh, the markets are always the, uh, the beneficiary of increased liquidity. Yes, that is the bottom line. Uh, when you increase the money supply, it has to go somewhere. And where's it going to go? Into bonds? I don't think so. Um, who would want to own a bond when look what you're getting on a, you know, your, your, your yield, the 10 year yield is, uh, you know, seven tenths of 1%. I mean, you know, mm -hmm. who, who's going to do that? There's, there's nothing there. Yeah. Yeah. Well, these... got to go into stocks. <laughs> As the saying goes, these are interesting times, are they not? And, and really we've, uh, we've seen so much transpire in such a short period of time. What, uh, What's the best way going ahead to, uh, to play this market? I think it's a trader's market. So in my opinion, um, you have to really understand charts. You have to really understand the capital and money flows each and every day. If you don't do that or you don't understand that, you're better off just sitting out. Um, this is a market that's going to be very, very volatile for, you know, the foreseeable future. Um, right now, we have a market that's moving higher, but there'll be a time where you get another, what we call in the business, a bear raid, where the bears overtake the bulls and the markets go lower. I'm ne ne neither a bear nor am I a bull. I'm just a trader. We want to be on the right side of the tape, whether the Dow goes to 100,000 or it goes to one. I just want to be on the right side of that move. Yeah. And you know that's what we do looking at charts. We're not perfect. There'll be times we're going to lose. There're going to be times where, you know, we'll we'll just miscalculate. But the good part about it is, you know, if you don't have extreme volatility, usually your loss is going to be small. In this case, where you have extreme volatility, you have to be prepared that your losses could be a little bit steeper because you don't know what you're going to wake up to. I mean, we could wake up to anything on any day, and that's what you have to be a little bit aware of that you know, the markets are a bit more dangerous right now. It's like if you were to go to the beach uh, on a sunny day with no wind or you're going to go to a beach during a hurricane. Well, right now we're in a hurricane. But, you know, we, we've had a little bit of a lull, and the markets have had a nice bounce, and I think they could go up a little bit more. But, you know, what people don't realize is just look at how quickly the markets were able to gain back basically 50% of what they lost. I mean, we, we dropped from, you know, February 19th on the S&P 500 all the way down to March 23rd, and now we've recovered 50% of that. So, you know, we'll go up a little bit more, but the reality of it is you're going to bump up into some major headwinds again. That's just the reality of it. You know, nothing sure. goes up in a straight line. That's what the markets do. They, they bounce and they chop and they form, you know, patterns, and that tells you, you know, the sentiment is changing, but... You know they're going to be volatile going forward, so you got to be prepared. You got to be a chartist. Yeah, I, I couldn't agree with you more. Hey, uh, one final one, just curious for my own purposes. Uh, big box stores, 
uh, what are the, what's the deal with them? So which one in particular? Uh, um, it's like Costco. You want to look at Costco, Walmart. You know. You yeah. Know. So I was just in Walmart um, recently, and I, I just closed out that trade. I got in at around 108, and I actually got in that equity um, on the. I believe it was. I got to look at my blotter here, but I believe it was around March 26th. And the stock went all the way up to 126. I didn't get out there. I got out just above 118, and then we soared. And now the stock's trading at 121. I love Walmart long term. I love Costco long term. And Target also looks pretty decent, not as good as Walmart and Costco. But I still think that those are the places to be on pullbacks. So I would be buyers of those companies on any kind of pullback especially Costco and Walmart, Walmart being my overall favorite. All right. Interesting. Well, interesting times ahead. We've just been through very interesting times. Maybe we'll get a little lull in things, but in any event, uh, since we're not trading today, since the markets are shut down, go take a look at inthemoneystocks.com. You can see Nick's historic performance there and all sorts of free training materials, special offer there for you if you like. And Nick, uh, hey, have a great weekend, and we'll see what Monday brings. Happy Passover and happy Easter. This is your dose of daily market wisdom with master trader Nick Santiago. Starting from humble beginnings, Nick has been beating the markets for over two decades. He shares with you his take on the profitable trades that will have you moving towards financial freedom in no time at all. To see an in-depth review of his track record and much more, go to InTheMoneyStocks.com.